So we've seen the definition of non-coherent detection. It's detection when the phase difference between the transmit and the receive oscillator is unknown. And we've seen the reason why non-coherent exists it's to save money, to low, reduce complexity of our receiver. We don't need to figure out what is that difference and track it. And now we're going to see our first example of a modulation format that exploits non-coherent detection. And that's going to be a phase shift keying, but we're going to put a D in front of it because it's called differential phase shift keying, and we'll see how exactly that works. So the idea is, of course, we reduce the cost of the receiver because we're not going to do any phrase tracking. This only works, the approach I'm going to show you now for differential phase shift keying, it only works if that phase difference is slowly changing. And then I say slowly, I mean compared to what? I mean compared, actually, not only to the bit rate, but let's say compared to the symbol rate. It's got to be slow compared to the symbol rate. So when I change from one symbol to the next symbol to the next symbol, that phase has got to be pretty much the same from one symbol to the next symbol. If I look 10 symbols apart, OK, yeah, maybe it'll be very, very different. But from one symbol to the next, that phase difference is going to be pretty much the same. So it's, it's changing, but it's slowly changing. And slowly is vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the symbol rate. I, I said that I'm only going to talk about differential uh, binary, in which case it would just be the bit rate. But you could generalize this to higher order, and then it would be the symbol rate that would matter. So the idea in differential phase shift keying is that the information is coded in the phase, but we're going to use a trick. We're going to put it into the difference of the phase from one symbol to another. Let me show you how that works. So before I show you how it works, let me tell you about how that's going to change the form of our receiver. So I'm going to be using a receiver which actually does not have a local oscillator. It doesn't have its own oscillator. Instead, what I'm going to do in my new receiver for non-coherent detection of PSK, I'm going to take the receive signal and I'm going to split it in two. And one of the branches, I'm going to just delay. Delay by one symbol period, or in the case of binary, delay by one bit period. There's one interval, one bit interval. And then I'm going to use that in order to do the correlation. So remember, in a co coherent detector, what did I do? I took the receive signal, and I had my own local oscillator at the same uh, carrier frequency that I would use for correlation. But now, in this case, for non-coherent detection, I'm going to use what I call a self-reference. So of course, the received signal has got some uh, cosine omega 0 term in it, and I'm going to actually use that to do the decoding. So recall that the data is encoded in the phase. That's what phase shift keying is all about. Now I'm going to be doing differential, and I'd like to show you what that means, differential. So the data is in the phase, and I have this receiver, this funky receiver, which takes the received signal in and correlates with itself. So let's look at this. I have one term, which is the signal I'm trying to recover at instant k. And then there's a second branch, which was the self-reference, which is a little bit older. Remember, I, I have a delay of, of one symbol. So I'm going to be looking at the previous symbol, so the k minus 1 uh, symbol. So that means what I have here is multiplication, the correlation of the signal at time k with the signal at time k minus 1. So here's the data at time k, and here's the data at time k minus 1. The data is coded into the uh, phase. Now, I go back to my favorite trigonometric identity, and I know that this will generate two terms, one with the sum of these terms and the other one with the difference of the two terms. So what that means is that I'm going to come up again with something that has a double frequency term, and it's something that's in uh, the low frequency or baseband. And this term is going to be uh, given by the difference in the phase from time k and time k minus 1. So when I, uh, of course, as usual, the double frequency term is irrelevant to me. I'm going to filter that out. What remains is the difference between these two phases, and this is our information. And so we're going to put our data in the phase, but we're going to put our data into the difference of the phase. So for instance, I could say that a logical zero will happen when there is no phase change at all. That when you see that there's a phase at time k and k minus 1, and that these two are the same, that means that the difference will be zero, I'm going to say that's when I want to transmit a logical zero. 
And if I have a logical one I want to transmit, well then you're going to see a difference in the face. Now, that was fine. Uh, I didn't have any drift in that, right? I just showed you how that receiver would work. Does this idea of a self-reference work? Yeah, sure it works. Uh, and I can see that I want to code things in the difference of the face. But the reason I said I was going to use that receiver was because of this drifting face. So what happens with this drifting face? Well, I'd have this unknown phi, which is this phase which is changing with time. There's the transmitter, the receiver, they're not coordinated, and uh, there's this phase difference between them. But I said it was slow. And I said from one symbol interval, from one bit interval to the next, it's pretty constant. So I'm going to say that in this branch we had a phi, and in the other branch, well, that same phase difference was there. Now, if I just add this phi everywhere in my equations, I can see that there would be a double phi term and the double frequency term, but that one disappears. And the two phi's, they cancel out in the second term. So that means in my baseband, it won't matter what that dephase, dephase is. is. Uh, you know, whatever that phi was that I didn't know because I didn't pay for a phase lock loop to be able to track it, it doesn't matter because if I use this strategy, it just goes away. Of course, if the phase is changing very quickly, this wouldn't work. I would have one phase here, I'd have another phase here, and these two wouldn't cancel out. So, phase that's changing slowly compared to the bit rate, bit rate because I'm talking about binary, and if it were a higher order uh, modulation, it would be uh, compared to the symbol rate. So, and there was an old uh, exam question where I talked about uh, I believe it was QPSK. So binary phase shift keying, this is quaternary, and so it's a little bit tricky in this question because now you have to worry about the symbol rate rather than the bit rate. But I do say that this is the bit rate, uh, one kilobit per second, and I say that the phase remains constant over a period of time, something on the order of two milliseconds, and um, Actually, I put it up here, 16 dpsk, so you have to look at the symbol rate and see if a change on the order of 2 milliseconds is consistent with that symbol rate. So this is the kind of question you might have about non-coherent detection. So I'm coding the information in the phase difference. You know, how do I do that? Well, that's really easy. You, you, you pre-code the information so that your receiver structure doesn't matter whether you're using coherent detection or incoherent detection. So let me just take you uh, through that. So M of K will be the uh, information to be transmitted, and C of K is going to be what I actually transmit uh, because I'm going to pre-code it so that this difference in uh, 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 the phase Will, will work. So in this line I have my message, my binary message I want to transmit and uh, what I'm going to do is use this operation, this line, Boolean operation in order to take this bit, bit stream and turn it into that bit stream. Now once I've turned it into this bit stream then of course uh, logical 1 becomes pi, pi logical 0 is 0. So the tricky part is you know going through this uh, operation, you know, but it's just a Boolean calculation, and you can see uh, where uh, Sklar gets this um, uh, table because he's taking the previous bit and putting in the operation with the current bit uh, in order to get this coded uh, sequence. Oops, sorry. So uh, I do this. Uh, why? Because I know that in the receiver, what I'm going to strategy I'm going to take is I'm going to put in this delay. So now I look at um, what will happen at the receiver with this strategy that I just used about this pre-code that I suggested that we use for um, uh, the, the differential phase shift key. So again, this is phases unknown, non-coherent detection, so I have this self-reference uh, that I'm using. So now I'm going to estimate the uh, bit that was transmitted, and because I'm using this receiver structure, I know that what will come out of that will be the cosine of the difference between the two phases. The phases which were transmitted in interval k and the phase that was transmitted in interval uh, k minus 1. So if we look at what's happening at the reception, uh, you can see that, of course, uh, this was what was transmitted, a pi and a pi, and the difference between them is 0, which gives a cosine of 1, and indeed it was a 1 that was transmitted. So uh, you can see that that pre-coding we did was spot on because that means when we get here uh, with this self-reference 
that we will uh, indeed uh, get the correct uh, estimate of the, of the transmitted bit out of our receiver. So this is what we use in order to save money, right? First of all, you don't even need a local oscillator, so you're saving money again there. So it's like really a cheap receiver. You just need a little delay line. Uh, and then, of course, the correlator structure and the decision stages are the same, but we've saved our money here. No local oscillator and no phase lock loop in order to synchronize the phase. Now, if I use this idea about let's code in the difference of phase instead of in the absolute phase. You know, this is not the optimal receiver. The optimal receiver would look something like this. I would do a correlation with the true phase, and then I would do this delay. But of course, I'm not going to do that. That's expensive. I'd have to know the phase, and I'd have to pay for a local oscillator. So this is optimal. It would have better performance, but you know, no way I would use the optimal form. I use the inexpensive form, because that's the whole reason I'm doing differential phase shift keying. So what makes it, why am I only going over the binary version for this. It, does, it looks like I'm talking about m -ary versions sometimes. But when it comes to calculating the probability of error, things get complicated. And because of that, we're only looking at the binary case. The binary case not too hard. So what happens is I have the original received signal, which is signal plus noise, uh, transmitted signal plus noise, and I split that into two branches. So in this first branch, I have noise at a certain time t. And, but now I've put in this delay, so now I have a noise at a different time, t. So uh, I know that these are two independent noise samples because it's Gaussian noise. This is Gaussian noise, and I know that once I delay them, they're completely uncorrelated. They're independent. But I multiply them together. And if you multiply a random vari Gaussian random variable with a Gaussian random variable, you do not get a Gaussian random variable. If I add them, yeah, sure, I get another Gaussian. But when you multiply them, no, you get a non-Gaussian noise. So here you have the product of two noise samples, and, and those are not uh, uh, Gaussian. So I won't go through the math for the Gaussian, non-Gaussian case, although I think it is in the book. Uh, but the bit error rate comes out to have a very simple form, deceptively simple form. The um, probability of error for DPSK, differential binary phase shift keying is just one half and I have an exponential of e to the minus b over n0. Super. Don't even need that, that strange integral, <laughs> the q function. I just need an exponential. If I were to compare that, remember I said there was an optimal, I'd have to pay for the uh, phase the recovery and for a local oscillator. This would be the performance of that optimal receiver, just FYI. But uh, what's interesting is this uh, a non-coherent receiver, which is suboptimal but cheap. And this is the performance of it. And of course, I, I kind of like to compare it with the performance for these coherent systems. Like, what am I paying in order to save money? What am I paying in terms of the performance and the bit error rate? So it is uh, interesting to look at the Q function, which is what we use for the coherent detection. And it has a form uh, which looks a little bit like the exponential, which lets us uh, maybe understand why we can easily compare the two. And in fact, if we compare coherent BPSK or QPSK, they have essentially the same performance, with this differential binary phase shift keying, it's only a little bit worse. It's really only 1 dB worse. So the penalty, 1 dB, very reasonable for a much simpler uh, receiver. And that's pretty much true for binary or for QPSK.